All right, welcome to Gateway API meeting for July 18. This is our first meeting after having released beta V050. Thank you to everyone who helped get us to that point. And now, no no, no rest for anyone. Uh, we got to keep on moving towards uh, 060 now. Uh, so I, I spent some time just trying to sketch out some of the priorities that I thought made sense, uh, but want to discuss those today. Uh, but before we go any further, uh, let me uh, take a step back and welcome anyone. I think I see a couple new faces here. Uh, if anyone wants to introduce themselves and they haven't been to one of these meetings before or haven't had a chance to introduce themselves, uh, by all means, we'd love to meet you. Uh, so I'll leave just a brief 10, 15 seconds for anyone who might want to introduce themselves. Cool. That's fine. Uh, we'll keep on going then. Uh, this is a community meeting uh, that follows the same practice as any other Kubernetes community meeting. Feel free to add agenda items as you, as you see fit, ask questions. Uh, there's a wide range of ex expertise or experience. You're right, Shane. I'm sorry. I didn't leave enough time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, we, we have a wide variety of experiences here. So uh, Definitely, uh, if you are not as familiar with this API, uh, don't hesitate to ask any questions. Uh, sometimes we don't provide as much context as we could. Uh, so uh, as always, uh, we want everyone to feel welcome and like they can ask any question and there are no stupid questions here. So with that uh, basic introduction, uh, let's get into priorities for 060. Uh, first up, uh, gRPC route. I, I think Richard is here. We've. I feel so bad, Richard. We have. We we approved your gap, and we thought, oh well, this release is right around the corner for, I don't know how long, and it took a long time for V050 to get out the door, and we didn't want one more thing in that release, and we finally hit release. Uh, is there anything that you we should double check on this PR? Uh, any bits of feedback we should be looking for. Richard, um, do you think this is good? I, th I think it's basically what was in the gap. So I don't think there should be anything controversial here. Cool. OK. Um, yeah, I need to take one more look at it. I, I added, I think, one comment earlier today. But otherwise, and I think you've already resolved it. Uh, otherwise, I think this is in an awfully good place. Uh, does anyone have any hesitation about merging this? Okay. Well, uh, we'll take that as it is. Uh, I'll I'll make sure personally to to run through this one more time. But I know this this PR has been waiting to go in for a while, and I would love to just see it in. So I'll make sure I, I spend some time on it. And anyone else who cares about gRPC. This is your chance to give one last round of feedback before it gets in. To be clear, it is going into experimental channel, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's not yeah. really the, like the last chance. Like we can spend some time. That is right. True. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be rude. I was just trying to double check. Like we're we're planning no, no. on there being a period here where we try to implement it, and then we could still come up with stuff. Yeah. No. I I, I definitely appreciate that clarification, and you know. It goes into experimental, and even still, it's not released yet. Uh, but certainly, something like that's released, even if it's an experimental, I'd rather not, you know, break everything and change any, everything after it's released. Uh, but yes, there's still definitely room for feedback. Uh, just the the more broadly it gets deployed or used, the harder it is to make any changes. As always. Uh, Roger that. Cool. All right, uh, next on the list is reference grant. I personally am very interested in getting reference grant over the line to beta. I know we already have conformance tests for it. Thank you to everyone who's contributed to those. Uh, I know we have several implementations that support it. Uh, we have some basic validation. What I am really unsure about in this graduation criteria is who's actually using it and who's actually implemented it. And that's kind of hard to know in the world of open source where anyone could have implemented it without 
you know, API maintainers being aware. Uh, so I'm interested for anyone on the call, have you implemented this? Do you have any feedback from users? Do you know of anyone who's actually using it if you've implemented it? So we do have like a really basic, like we, we, we have references to it in our code and we do have like a really basic, uh, I believe it's a namespace check that we do using it, but we don't have any users using it. That's, that's where we're at. My understanding is that uh, HashiCorp and so uh, more specifically console and contour have implemented this as well. Is anyone on the call from those projects? I'm not from those projects, but I think we implemented it as well. Uh, certainly okay. for, for secrets, I, I think we did for, for backends too, mostly because I, I thought we had to. <laughs> I didn't know you could opt yeah. out on the conformance test. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We that that makes back. sense. So, but we don't have feedback. We we've implemented it, but I haven't heard anyone say that they, you know, they used it and loved it or hated it or anything like that. That makes sense. Uh, I, so it seems like we probably have three or four implementations, but very little to almost zero feedback so far for this resource. It seems like what what we may need as the next step here is some kind of issue tracking reference grant graduation criteria, basically, and calling out that the thing we're missing right now is user feedback. Uh, I have some feedback about the feedback about user feedback. So <laughs> um, we have been intentionally at Kong uh, not calling our implementation of Gateway API beta and has been off by default. We've called it an alpha level feature gate. So we actually use feature gates like upstream Kubernetes does and gateway is a feature gate. And so that means it's been default to off. Um, basically we were waiting for the first beta release. So now that we have beta APIs, we will be, we're, we're on, uh, I'm having a meeting tomorrow about like getting it into a, this is beta and we will have it on by default. So we've been waiting for that. We did not want to say, yeah, our implementation is beta and everything that they see is alpha. That didn't make any sense. So just to just to throw it out there, I think that's probably, if, if not likely, it seemed likely to me at the time, probably most implementations are doing something like that, or at least now that we have a beta release, there will be more adoption. So we might want to just give it some time. Like it might be as simple as that, because at least from our perspective, we'll be turning this on by default in the next few weeks. And uh, then we'll be able to get more feedback on this kind of stuff. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. I think we're running into the age old problem that we've had with Kubernetes APIs forever is that it is near impossible to get widespread usage and feedback on an alpha feature because alpha is never on by default. Uh, and nobody really wants to use, you know, in, in production at least, these kind of alpha features. You really have to go out of your way to test these out. Um, yeah, we've had extremely low people turning on the feature gate. Like it's yeah. been a few, it's been a handful really. Um, yeah. A few customers, like there's been a few interactions, but it's it's not a lot at all. Yeah. So, so that may mean that we need to adjust the guidance here. You know, certainly we want some usage, some real world usage of a feature before it gets to beta, but how we measure that maybe needs some work. Uh, I'm not sure. With that, I think I'll move on to the next thing. And I don't see Jeff on this call, but I think that the thing that's really next in line as far as readiness is this route inclusion and de delegation discussion, right? Uh, Jeff had proposed this. We'd had a number of discussions in the spring about uh, route inclusion and delegation, but I think it's just kind of got put on, on hold while we released VO50 and we just need to bring it back. I think everyone, I think a lot of people are excited about route inclusion and delegation. I, I really am. I'd love to see that make 
traction move forward in 050, 060, sorry. Uh, but yeah, this, this is one of the big highlights I see in our next release. Uh, and Jeff is not on the call, but I'll follow up with him after to see uh, what kind of, uh, what the next sets are for this one. And the, the other ones I, I can think of here are, I know we've said we need to get our L4 routes to beta. So TCP and TLS seem like they have a somewhat clear path. UDP route is harder for me to reason about, but again, need to have more, more discussion and more focus on these kind of L4 level routes. Um, th those are the things that I'm aware of in Gateway API that already have some existing work that we want to kind of push to the next level. Is there anything else before we get to Gamma that we should be thinking about for 060? Uh, sorry to be late, Rob. Um, the, uh, I don't know if you mentioned before with the uh, reference gate one, just to roll back to that, um, Contour has, has got that implemented. Um, I don't know if we've got, um, uh, I don't know if we've got good uh, actual signal of people using it, but we do have we do have it implemented in this capacity. Yeah, I'll update I'll update the meeting uh, notes with my stuff as well. Sorry, my uh, my cursor <laughs> or keyboard focus keeps on going over to chat, which is very much not helpful. But uh, yeah, sorry for the chat spam. But it's it it sounds like thank you for that update. Uh, it sounds like. Con, Contour, Console, and Istio uh, all support this. Uh, and all, you know, it, it seems like almost zero feedback so far from this. Uh, so that that's kind of the, the missing piece. It, it exists, there's some, some support for it, uh, but people actually opting in and using it and then providing feedback is kind of the, the missing step. Um, I think we... Also need to just remember that uh, other APIs are looking at using this API as well. Um, you know, there's at least two instances I've seen where other APIs are looking at using reference grant um, in their own APIs. Uh, and so they would like it moved to beta as well. Um, I don't know if, but we should check in with them about their usages of the uh, alpha reference grant and see if, um, you know, if they have any actual information about it being used or if they're just still in the design phase. Yeah, good point. Uh, yeah, so other APIs as well. Uh, I remember this, is it storage bucket is one? Yeah, I think um, that was okay. yeah, storage bucket, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. so this is gonna be a real test of that last bit of the graduation criteria of people are actually using this feature. Uh, and we, it, you know, as I kind of mentioned before, we need some probably more concrete way to identify what that means. Uh, but I think reference grant has probably met every other piece of the criteria right now. Uh, yeah, I do think that so. it's uh, it's a really bad look though that uh, you can't actually you know, that if you want to be able to do cross namespace references, you can't do them properly uh, in in the in the standard channel. And so I think we need to work really hard on pushing this to um, to beta. I yeah, completely agree. Cool. All right, so that's L4 routes um, and uh, reference grant. Uh, last I wanted to ask about was Gamma and I'll kind of hand this over. I see John's on this call, I, Keith, you're on this call. It's probably too early to know what your priorities are, what you're hoping to get in the next few months, but uh, any idea what, what you'd hope to do sometime this fall? Uh, I, I was just about to kind of echo one of the questions in the chat, which was, do we have a targeted release uh, date for this? Because that'll probably affect the answer there. You know, I think that, that that's a good question. Uh, one of the things that I know is if we have something like that is ready to graduate to beta, like let's say reference grant, that is very close to ready for beta. And whenever that hits that last bit 
of this is ready for beta, I think that's, we'd have to, you know, we'd have to release pretty soon after that. Um, I would like to get one more release out, one more minor release out in the 2022, this calendar year. Personally, uh, I'm open to what others think. I think it's at least possible to get reference grant to beta in that time frame. I'd love to do more. Yeah, I think that um, I would certainly, I would like to see us have reference grant to beta before uh, QCon in a, um, you know, so that's like before start of October, personally. Uh, I think that that is probably doable um, if we can get some actual user feedback. Um, you know, it might require being clever with what user feedback is, uh, but you know, like we should be able to get some something from people who are actually using this who are not actually on this call right now. And I think that's the key is that, you know, we need to have some people who are not involved in the development of gateway API or, or an implementation. Um, yeah, um, actually saying, yeah, this, this thing is useful and we've used it um, is, the, is the key thing. Um, that's, that's, my, that's what I would like. Um, I don't think that's unachievable. Um, and then once we've done that, then it would be really nice that, um, it would be really nice if we could cut another one this year, but uh, again, uh, what would be in that? I have no idea. Gotcha. Um, to go back to your original question, Rob, with that being said, uh, and John or Mike, feel free to offer other opinions here, but I think by that time period, I'd at least want us to have a, a model for how to think about service mesh and get ready API. Um, I think that's pretty achievable. We've already got a good start. Um, and ideally, it, it would be pretty cool if we don't even need to add resources or if the resources we're adding are just like, you know, maybe a mesh to, to, to correspond to gateway and our, our mesh class correspond to gateway class, depending on what that model looks like. It would be great if it was minimal and like a, the first step was just being able to get like a, a mental map for folks of, of how to start thinking about gateway API for mesh. Uh, John, Mike, you have any other thoughts there? Nope, I definitely agree. Yeah, I think that that feels like about the most that we should <laughs> shoot for in kind of this time frame. I, I don't think that we'll get too much further than that uh, in terms of like actual implementation. Yeah, definitely only experimental channel targeting. Uh, in this time here, I think. That seems reasonable. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that that seems great. I, I just look at this list and I am amazed at how much we have coming up. Uh, so I, I feel like we say this every week, but if you're interested in getting more involved in contributing to this API, we have all kinds of opportunities here. Uh, all kinds. Uh, there, there it are opportunities to go up the, you know, contributor ladder. Uh, lots of opportunities in this project and great ways to contribute. So if this kind of stuff interests you, we'd love to have you. Um, Agreed. Um, I, I would sort of add to that as well and say that um, I don't think we're doing, I had a bit of a look through like our you know, good first issues and stuff like that. And we're definitely not doing a good job of making it easy for you all at the moment. And so if you are interested in, in contributing, but you can't find a place to start, please feel free to ping me personally, you know, Nick on Cube Slack. Um, and I would love to be able to sit down and go through some open issues and people can talk me through like the sorts of things you're interested in. We can try and find you some stuff that may have been closed by the stale bot or, you know, that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, like I, we haven't done a good job of, of doing this. So like, you know, I would like to bootstrap that process a bit and, you know, help people to get themselves up to speed on like what's happening and what needs to be done um, and find some sort of lower hanging fruit that, that then, and then figure out a way that we can turn those low hanging fruit um, into like things that you don't need me to sit with you to, to or, or, you know, so I maintain it to sit with, but, but right now we do not have that, right? So we need to build that. Um, and so I would really appreciate if uh, anybody wants to hit me up. Um, I do work Australian hours, so like, you know, this time or a bit later is like the best for me, but um, you know, but I, I will make time um, for anybody who wants to do that, please. 
Yeah. And oh. I'll, I'll echo what Nick said too. Uh, depend, you know, I, I work Pacific time, uh, but between us and, and Shane, uh, as maintainers, I think we have pretty good time zone coverage. So find a maintainer that's in your time zone. I'm sure we'd all be interested in helping uh, get you started. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think there's a couple of um, call outs we should make before we move on to um, any further discussion. Um, Mikey had a good call in there about um, TLS route being distinct from TCP route. Um, we talked actually a lot about that his historically. There's quite a bit of context there. Um, and so, uh, I think that it is a useful distinction to have personally. Um, the uh, but uh, with that would that is a discussion for another time. Um, I also think in terms of the layer four stuff, UDP route is probably the hardest one to do with an in cluster proxy. Um, but that it's going to be really important for the um, basically TCP route and UDP route are the most important for service type load balancer replacement, right? Like a lot of what we've talked about with HTTP route is effectively ingress object replace, ingress resource replacement. Uh, the other the TCP route and UDP route to a lesser extent TLS route is for like replacing service type load balancer, like functionally, not like obviously both ingress and service type load balancer will never go away. They are GA APIs, they are to be supported for the foreseeable future, but we wanna be able to um, give you the option of using the gateway API constructs instead and getting better, better user experience. Yeah, well said. Cool. Any any last points on these priorities? Is there? I'll, I guess I'll ask one last time. Is there anything we're missing? If we were, you know, is there anything we should be working on in the last half of this year that is not on this list? Okay. I will take that. I know there's uh, a few discussions here that will probably result in net new work, uh, but I think these are the major themes that we're going forward with. Um, next up, Gamma, you have decided on meeting times. Congrats. Uh, Keith, I think you went with a week, well, eight days from today at this time, but. Yep. Awesome, cool. Uh, I I know you're you're stuck on a PRI pinged Casey to try and help with that. Hopefully we'll get some kind of response soon. But yeah, anyone interested in Mesh and Gateway API, uh, separate meeting starting for that awfully soon. Cool. I will definitely Any... be there. I, I definitely have, have some thoughts, but uh, that are not fully developed. So I'd like to talk through some of them with you. Um, I've read I've read the doc. Um, but I'm not sure where to put my comments on the doc. So, uh, yeah. So, I'll uh, yeah, I'll come along to that first meeting for sure. You know, awesome. On that on that note, one of the things I, you know, I don't know that we have time to get into a full fledged discussion about what this would look like, but I think it could be helpful if you know. I think there's probably a good amount of overlap on the people on this call and the people that will attend that call. Uh, is there some homework or required reading kind of thing that would help us be better prepared for the first gamma meeting? Good question. Yeah, that uh, I think I linked to it in last week's uh, meeting notes. I've been I, I've linked that document so many times I forget where uh, everywhere that I put it. Yeah, here it is uh, down here. Uh, but this is probably the best. Uh, required reading uh, here, this uh, exploration, uh, get ready for, net, for mesh traffic. Uh, so uh, that's where a lot of discussions kind of already taken place. Uh, so if you're wanting to show up, this that'll probably be our starting point. Um, and Rob, just for some to, to uh, add in, into your uh, bullet point on meeting times, just wanted to make it known uh, and restate here that we are planning to try to alternate uh, meeting times uh, for a gamma uh, to try to be inclusive of both those in kind of the Asia Pacific uh, time zones as well as those in Europe. We'll see how it goes. Um, <laughs> as most things in software, you know, we're going to iterate and see uh, how things how things work. But uh, this next one on July 26 is going to be, you know, wrapped with, you know, same time slot as this meeting at five, uh, well, 3 p.m. Pacific time. And then um, the next week on August 2nd, we'll be doing 8 a.m. Pacific time. 
Sounds great. I hope we get uh, more attendees from the uh, Europe time zones and uh, others. We tried that one. We tried that earlier on, and we didn't have as much luck with it. But there may be more mesh maintainers specifically uh, interested from that those time zones. So, yeah, uh, I I appreciate that you're uh, flipping between time zones, and hopefully we get more attendance that way. Um, cool. All right, so the last bit of this, I wanted to run through a few discussions, GitHub discussions specifically. Uh, I had been okay, well, not that great, but I had at least as in many meetings been going through issue triage and pre PR triage, which is basically matching upstream. But in upstream, we don't have discussions. And here we have discussions and those just kind of fell off, at least for me. And I'd left some comments, but going through them, there are some really good discussions in here that I have not paid as much attention to as I should. Uh, this is not a complete list by any stretch, but these are some of the ones that I thought were interesting and deserve more discussion here. Uh, as always, feel free to add something to the list if you think uh, we should discuss it here. But let's start with one that has been in discussion uh, over the past week or two. Uh, and that's Evan's point, which is a great one, that we don't have a good way of specifying the upstream protocol. Uh, for some, some period of time, we had suggested, well, use app protocol on service. And that works in very specific scenarios, but isn't as portable as you would like, as, as we would like. Um, so Nick, you've had good discussion on here. I know I've commented, I know Bowie's, a bunch of us have commented on this specific thread and I don't even really know where to start this discussion. Uh, you know, what, one of the things I'll highlight is I, uh, the app protocol field itself on service, we tried to add this kind of catch all thing of hey, it can be any service name or otherwise it needs to be a domain prefix name. And this list of names is very long, uh, but it does not include some very, very common uh, things. Like it's it's not really a perfect match for what app protocol is, but even gRPC, uh, HP2, HP2 over clear, like all these things are not included as a standard way of representing them with app protocol. So that's problem number one. If we say app protocol is the answer, it doesn't have a way to represent these very common things, at least in a portable fashion. And then two, if we say it's the, the answer, it doesn't have a way of uh, saying that a backend service supports more than one of these protocols. Like it, it's really focused on this is the thing I support. But in many cases, there are multiple things that a backend may support. Uh, so it seems like App Protocol is lacking what we really want here. And so we can go back upstream. And you know, at least for something like it doesn't support these things, we can just say, well, this is how you represent these very common protocols. That's like one starting point. The next part is much harder to change, and that's how do you represent multiple, multiple, multiple of these? You know, it's just a string field. Uh, I don't think we want to go through the exercise of turning a string field into a list or doing comma separated, or it's all messy. Uh, so this is me coming with a problem and not a solution, but I'm <laughs> interested in what others think here. Uh, any? Any feedback, any additional thoughts on what we might be able to do with this? And as I said in that comment, I think the the other thing, the other dimension that we need to ensure is captured here is like uh, pro capabilities that need protocol stuff. WebSockets is the is the canonical example here. Like that can be done over HTTPS, can be done over H2, can be done over HTTP 1.1, can be done over clear text. But there's lots of places where that can be done. In Contour, we ended up just making that a separate field of its own, like WebSockets enabled, true. Um, 
And so I think there may be some space for us to need to add stuff like that. Um, I, it would be nice to be able to have some way to do it a bit um, more elegantly than that. Um, uh, what that could be, not sure. I do think it's also important for us to use the right words here. Um, as always, um, the envoy nomenclature of uh, upstream being uh, in this use case is north, not towards the internet, not, uh, and so the, and the back ends are downstreams is very confusing. So I think that uh, we need to make sure we don't use upstream and downstream. Um, we need to use back end and client or something like that, um, because uh, otherwise you can be very confusing if you're used to working on envoy things. Um, you know, I always find I have to clarify that with people. Um, so um, just, yeah, the amount of things aside, uh, I think that, yeah, we definitely need to talk more about this um, and we need to say like, hey, what, what do we think we need? Um, I do think that there's a really important distinction to talk because, um, because we've got like a protocol field on the listener, which is the uh, client side, internet side. Uh, and this is, we're talking here about the back end side. Um, there is an implied translation if those two things are different. Um, and so it's also important to consider like what that implied translation means and is it possible? Like, you know, if you say HTTP on the listener and then you say gRPC on the, um, on the inside or, or use gRPC route, um, see Richard's on the call, um, you know, does that mean that you're implying that the gateway should be able to transfer, translate between 1.1 and gRPC? Like does to me, but like, you know, is that what we want to, we need to be explicit about that and say like, hey, this is how, this is how you do this. Um, you know, and I think that the thing that, the thing that Evan's doing really well here is, is he's helping us make sure that we plug the holes in our spec, right? This is, the, this is the thing that we absolutely do not want to have to happen. We don't want to have a vague spec like Ingress sort of be what we all end up building around. Like we want to be, we want to have the spec be specific and handle this stuff specifically and for us all to agree. And the only way that we can do that is by making sure that everybody you know, talks on this sort of discussion and we talk about it in some meetings and we come to some general agreement. I don't think the specific solution is nearly as important as us coming to a general agreement about it. John. I'm just giving some, not solving a problem, but this is a canonical problem in the industry and it's never been solved. I mean, there's been multiple IETF groups formed to try and define the canonical app ID. Um, I think every vendor, and we're one of them, <laughs> defines their own app IDs and they have a huge mapping table. Um, so I'm not sure if there's a way to solve it, absolutely. So I would suggest that however you want to solve it, or however we try and solve it, <sighs> you leave a lot of dangling wires so we don't try and bottle the ocean because it's just it is a horrible problem i mean we have several thousand app ids and we add more every week and we've added a few hundred thousand for SaaS applications so you know it's just it's just you know <laughs> horrible so I, i'm but so that does not help i'm sure as rob said you know I'm not, I'm not coming up with a solution and I'm saying, don't try and boil the ocean. Just think of a, you know, what you need to do to make it workable, but not solve all problems. Thanks, man. That, that's really, really good advice. <laughs> well, I'm not sure it's good advice, but at least. Yeah, I mean, no, it is good advice. Remember, hey, this is a really hard problem. I think that's a very good yeah. problem to call out. Like the, uh, I think that, like, I think we've got the pieces of like uh, 80 to 90% solution already, right? Like, you know, the fact that, the fact that we've already got a distinction between the one side and the other, like, and that lets you specify like implied translations uh, is a really nice property of how we've designed the, how we ended up designing the listener. Um, so I think that's, that's pretty neat. And we just need to be like, hey, that's not implied. If those don't, if those aren't the same or you specify one and not the other, then you know, or, you know, like then this is what happens. Like the, I think we just need to be specific there and say like, this is what that means. Could you think, I haven't looked at that much, but could you think of putting a translator hat hook, hook in the before or after hook to, 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 to you know, allow people to insert translation? Mm -hmm. Not sure it's a good idea because it'd be so much more complicated, but. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I probably not in favor of that. I'd rather have the, the, the translation. If we're going to have translation, it needs to be very early on and it needs to be, this is the way you do it. And 
there's no customizability that this is it because it's hard enough already. Like we've got to cut scope at some somewhere, I think. Okay. Um, and, and I think that we should be able to handle some of those things with the route, with the different route object types as well. Um, you know, I mean, there's some stuff there that we've specific that we left underspecified deliberately because we wanted to come back to it later. Uh, you know, like the fact that the listener has a protocol on it and then you attach routes that may or may not match that protocol. Like what happens if you specify HTTP as the listener protocol and then you attach TCP routes? Like, don't know. Um, you know, like we haven't specified. You know, I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Rob. No, you're, you're right. Uh, the, these are kind of the painful gaps in our API right now. And like, like John mentioned, it, it is challenging to solve and, uh, we, we need to be very careful in what we do here. So we don't boil the ocean. I, I also appreciate that guidance. Um, yeah, I, I think this, uh, you know, Evan's answer that, yeah, these are all subsets of HTTP. Yeah, that that's true. So, uh, a lot of, yeah, this, this is going to take some more thought. I think, I, I, I don't think any of us are at a point where we're proposing a solution. Uh, this is discussion 1244. I think we need some more discussion on this one. I, you know, one of the, the questions I raised in the agenda for this is, is this gateway API or is it upstream Kubernetes? Um, it could be solved in either place. I like solving it at a place where we can move a little bit faster, theoretically. <laughs> but I, again, I, I'm not sure. Um, Since we're in the problem discovery phase, do we know if other Kubernetes 6 have faced this problem? Is specific to this specific pro problem of upstream pro or backend protocol? Yeah, I mean, or... yeah, I see it is a very sort of ingress or a proxy centric thing, but I don't know if like network policy or if anybody else has faced this problem or not. Like if they have, maybe they have like just just to not fragment it further, right? Like as we as John said, right? This is already a pretty fragmented space and. We increase the fragmentation. I'm, I mean, I would also like to move fast. It's just uh, if somebody like somebody used reference grant, you know, great, so something like that. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I think that means, it, and it's a good idea. I think we should bring this up one level to and talk about it at Sig Network next week or uh, in a few days. Uh, and see what kind of other discussions have already happened here. Uh, I know we tried with that protocol and that's a relatively recent thing, but it leaves some gaps still. Uh, yeah, so maybe next step is really just to have the same discussion, but have it with everyone at the SIG network meeting on Thursday and see if anyone else has run into something similar. Uh, or saw, or proposed a, a similar solution at least. Cool. Well, again, conversation welcome on that one. Uh, Twelve forty four. Um, I can. I'll take a follow up to uh, uh, bring this to Sig Network. All right, the next one may be slightly easier to discuss, and that's um, this repeated query params in the URL itself. Uh, not query params in our API, but if the URL itself has A equals one and A equals two, which of those do we match on? Uh, there's been some discussion in this already that basically says, that the layer that Gateway API implementations largely exist at doesn't have much control over what the underlying implementation actually does here. 
right? So if, if you're programming Envoy or Nginx or whatever, the way they're going to match this URL is not something that you may have a lot of control over. Uh, so maybe, and, and there's nothing in a, an RFC that gives clear guidance of how you handle a match on that. Um, so the current suggestion is maybe we should just say that this is unspecified and can vary between implementations. Is there anything stronger we can say than that? Uh, or is it really just this is going to have variation depending on the underlying implementation. Do we allow for this for headers? Uh, so. I know this is for query yeah. parameters. What I'm asking is like, um, do we even, like what is the behavior with headers here? So there, there's two things. What we do handle is our configuration itself, right? Of uh, saying that uh, duplicate values. So if you have in the query param match list or the header param list in a HTTP route that duplicate values are invalid, will be prevented by the webhook. If they get past the webhook, I think we say you must trust the first value. I don't know, but we we have some level of guidance on what you do when there are duplicates in the HTTP route. What we don't have guidance for is when the actual request itself has duplicates. Um, and I don't know, and you may have been asking this, I don't know if we've said what happens for header matching if you have two headers with different value. I think we have, but I can't remember. Yeah, it probably makes sense to leave it as undefined at least at this point. Buy us more time. Yeah. If we're gonna leave it as undefined, we need to I think we need to explicitly say this is undefined, don't rely on any specific behavior. The other thing that we don't want to have happen is for people to be like, Oh, but Nginx does it this way. Yeah, like yeah, like and or you know, oh, but Envoy does it this way. Like the yeah, we need to if it's gonna be undefined, we actually need to say in something like an issue or something like that, hey. We have specifically led this, left this undefined, um, you know, because we are figure, figuring out what's going on. No behavior should be considered canonical at this time, or something like that. Like because otherwise we can end up with de facto implementation standards, which we didn't want. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I just noticed that Mikhail, you're on this call and you started this discussion. Is there anything you wanted to add? Here. Um, hi, this is this is Mikhail. Um, yeah, I, I just want to sort of like a guidance uh, for uh, what would be uh, like a more common way. Like, what is like like if you don't specify, let's say if you don't if if there is no like standards, what is like uh, what is the mo most common way to implement? Like, I, I come from like the Nginx gateway implementation, and we. We can implement it using different ways, so we can support multiple ways this can be implemented. So if there is no standard, maybe the next um, the question is, is there like a, some common way among, among all the proxies? And the second question will be, so I think uh, Nick, you said to create an issue, something to specify that, but maybe it should, it should be specified somewhere. Uh, it's it's a, like a very corner case, but maybe it's still, should be specified in the documentation for the for the for the particular field in a CRD. Yeah. yeah okay. So, they... Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. I was yeah. I was just gonna yeah. Uh, I agree that we should end up specifying something in the CRD, but I think we need to have a way to say um, you know, hey, we haven't we don't know enough to specify yet. Um, maybe maybe we put that in the Godoc and say, uh, you know, um, the um, you know, maybe we need to put it in there and say, hey, this is TBD, and we you know we we are still working on this. Maybe we just have a I mean, that actually feels like something that would be 
handy to have a standard way to do anyway, to say this behavior is currently undefined uh, and we are working on it. Might be handy because I think we're going to need that. Micah came up, came to the rescue here in chat, uh, pulling up the reference to what we did for header matching. And it seems like we just want to copy and paste that and say the same for query param matching. Uh, PR is welcome. This seems like a pretty straightforward one. Um, thank you for pulling that one up. Yeah, thank you, Micaiah. I'm wondering if we should be a little more cautious though in the future too. Um, like, do we want to leave ourselves an out to put something in the API to say whether we match exists in the set exactly is or things like that? Um, yeah, I think that in general we should. Um, absolutely. Um, but I think that again, like once we, once we specify, once we specify stuff like that, you can't take it back. So, um, you know, we need to be careful about doing that sort of thing because once, once you've done it, that's it, it's there forever. Or it, it is hard to remove is the, you know, it's easier to think of it as being there forever um, because of the difficulty of removal than uh, <laughs> even though you can actually remove it, it's just really hard. And the HTTP header case is a little bit different too. Um because it defines that you're allowed multiple and they end up semicolon separated or something. I have to reread the spec, but, and then some fields explicitly state whether or not they allow multiple, like the STS only allows one, but it specifies it takes the first, but there's no firm standard in either headers or parameters what the real behavior will be. So especially when the parameters, I think it's gonna get dicey. Yeah, I mean, I think, us putting something in there saying this is this is behavior is implementation specific. We encourage you to do something like blah blah blah, like is the way to go. And then if then if we all end up doing the same thing and it does there does evolve a standard, then we take that standard and try it in the docs. My fear though is like we'll all do something different for no great reason, and then we won't be able to firm it up in the future or change it because yeah, it's. It is, a real is it possible to to maybe say where possible we recommend matching the first specified query parameter? Uh, I'd recommend stating something like that, and then we can add a space in the API to make it more extensible in the future to say first, last, or one of, or exactly. Yeah, uh, Harry mentioned in chat that we we can use should and should not. Um, yeah. Which, Feels like a good idea to me. But I mean, certainly while it's alpha, we can play with a bit more, but like before we take it beta, I'd be very nervous if it were open. Yeah, so I mean, some of these fields are beta already. So, um, <laughs> yeah, because they're in HTTP route, which is now beta. Um, so yeah, uh, but I mean, we do have the, we have the experimental option where we can mutate some of this in like a experimental kind of way. Um, if we are adding new fields, we can't do experimental like uh, changes to the GoDoc for an existing field. Um, you know, like it's that's like we change it or we don't. There's no, there's no. Well, how about we put should wording in for now and say pick either first or last? I'd say first just because it's computationally easier, potentially. And then, uh, yeah. and then, yeah, and then, and then, and then as needed. yeah, I agree. And then, and then, wait to find out if implementations find it hard to do it first. And for instance, that would cover the HT, uh, the STS case of the HTTP headers. Like they want the first behavior if there's multiple. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's exceptions and weird stuff, but at least we have one case of HTTP specifying it. Yeah, yeah. Bowie asked in the chat, like, do we have a good sense of what it'll take to make a precise work here and how many implementations we've left out? And I, I would say no. Um, the um, yeah, so I, I think, um, yeah, it feels like picking one and being like, you should do this uh, and then waiting to see what happens is probably as good, a, uh, as, good an answer as any. That, yeah, that, that's my hesitation here. I, I know many implementations here are really just writing to an underlying proxy that they don't control. Uh, so they're kind of stuck with whatever that is doing. Uh, and in some cases, I, you know, I did a bit of uh, looking around as I was looking at this question, 
uh, or discussion. And what I found, and, and I could be remembering wrong, but I thought I found some uh, implementations that I only looked at the last query parameter instead of the first, for example, right? Um, so yeah, just need so to be. That's why we would hit a should, right? Like that, that it's not mandatory. But I think the, the thing that that gives us is, is then in the case that Mikhail was talking about where your implementation has the option to pick which one you pick, then you should pick the one, the, you know, the one that we say should, right? Like, yeah. yeah. And we should probably put some weasel words in the wording of the spec saying that the behavior here may vary and don't rely on this for whatever. Yeah, like your application should probably be validating that it got the right thing as well. Yeah. I mean, if you're routing by parameter, one hopes that only one parameter is set appropriately, right? <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you give people the API right to hang themselves, we all know that somebody's going to. Um, so sorry, Keith. Yeah, I just kind of want to echo that. Like there are uh I think two different audience audiences for this. There's the you know implementation developers who are, you know, need, need that guidance for should, should not um, and to understand their underlying proxy. But there's also the users um, who are, who might be surprised by this because they didn't realize that they're, the thing that they're using has a different uh, implementation. If you're migrating from Nginx to Contour or whichever direction, oh, wait, now my header, my, my, my matching is all broken because uh, their implementations are different. Uh, so I think those kind of situations where a, a end user could find themselves, uh, I mean, that, that, that's effectively a breaking change uh, when, if you move between implementations and that kind of uh, thing, I think is important enough to call out in documentation. Yeah, I but also like you may get broken by different web browser behavior, right? I mean, if it's just form fields and something, either the web developer shuffles stuff or the browser puts them in a slightly different order than I think actually it's specified. But anyway, if someone just fiddles them around and for some reason they're routing on something with multiple values, they could end up screwed either way. Like in some ways it's undefined behavior. If you have a route that says parameter is choice A as well as parameter is choice B and you're routing differently on both, like you're kind of doing something weird in that case anyway. Yeah, it feels like we, so we should also include there that uh, you know, users of this API should uh, you should should try to ensure that uh, that parameter matching values are distinct and that you don't have duplicates. Um, you know, you can only say should because, like, in the event that we have um, you know uh, delegated routes that allow you to match on uh, params, like it is possible that you could end up with two. And, and defining do you throw them out and stuff like that is really really complicated. I say this is someone who wrote who wrote a significant chunk of the, the contour code to handle the. Contours inclu uh, inclusion thing, which for reasons uh, was even harder than the one we're talking about for our one. Um, so yeah, like, uh, like, yeah. but I think again, providing some should guidance, at least we'll let people be like, hey, Debbie Dragon's here. Um, you know, don't, don't do this unless you really, really, really know what you're doing and expect there to be some weirdness um, if you do. Yeah, sure, I'm sure there, and yeah, Keith, Keith has put, the thing in there, yeah, the, there, there may be valid use cases. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But like, if we say to people, you shouldn't do that without a good reason, then maybe, maybe you have a use case that's a good reason, but you can know that, that there may be dragons. Yeah. I mean, there are absolutely valid use cases for parameters. The question is, like you can pick multiple choices on a list, right? If you have multiple things on shopping cart, you can put thing, but would you ever route differently based on that? Like that's the key question, right? Why would you ever dispatch on something that could have multiple potentially selectable values for routes? Like what sense does it make? Yeah, yeah. And so that's what I mean by putting putting uh, putting stuff in the spec to say, you know, users of this API, uh, users who are doing uh, query param matching should keep in mind that you know, that you should be careful about what you what params you pick for matching and don't don't use don't you try not to end up with multiple you know, with multiple param matches using the same parameter, like, because that, because that could get weird, like. So anyway, guess. back to, back to the original point before I interrupted rudely, like, I think you're absolutely right. This is a good first PR, but I think it also needs some decent amount of documentation in the yeah, code yeah. to describe it. Yeah, totally. But I, think, I think the I think, fundamental logic makes sense. So I think we have broad consensus here. Is anyone willing to create an, an issue describing 
basically what we discussed here uh, and taking it as a good first issue. I guess I can do the um, no, go ahead. We had a collision. Yeah, it's fine. You created this, so go ahead. Yep, sounds good. Awesome. Thanks, Mikhail. Cool. Great discussion. Uh, I think we're just about running out of time, but I'll try and real quickly go through uh, or at least highlight that these exist. Uh, one is this discussion of cluster local gateways. Uh, I'm interested in it from, from a slightly different but similar perspective of network local gateways, uh, which I think would largely be configured in a similar way. At least that's my perspective on this. It seems like, you know, of our discussions, this has almost the most up, up votes. So it seems like there's some level of interest in this one. Uh, there's some discussion here. I need to get back to it, but just I wanted to raise this in case anyone else hadn't been watching discussions that closely. If you have thoughts on how this could be represented, I know we have been interested in kind of a generic way of representing, I want this gateway to be internal to my network or cluster or something. Uh, and this isn't the first time this, this discussion has come up. Uh, I don't have a solution for it yet, but if you have ideas, this is discussion 1247. A question. Is this kind of an idea that I would have a sort of internal load balancer service that would load balance in front of another service that did have a load balancer sort of thing? I think the intent is that it's still inter cluster traffic but it's for between two clusters you own that don't hit the internet. Oh, okay. So, so it's, it's not intra, it's, it's, it's not intra, it's in, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's inter-cluster traffic when you own multiple clusters rather okay. than, yeah. and you don't want to, you know, and you want to be able to say, I want this to be an internal uh, network, but it's still inter-cluster. Um, okay. So I think, I think, but so, but it could be that, it could be that Evan is also saying about, hey, I want to have an intra-cluster um, gateway that is like hairpinning, essentially, um, yeah. the traffic um, for the cluster, which I was actually looking actually, at. The way I read yeah. this is talking about K-native load balancing. So it specifically is for, seems to be within one cluster, although your use case is very interesting too. Yeah, so I, I was just kind of adding on an extra one of uh, same network but Evan's use case is very much same cluster. Yeah, so it's uh, hairpinning, essentially. If, yeah. if we were talking in old school firewall-y kind of terms, which I think is actually <laughs> useful. <laughs> what you called it back then, right? Hey, I know, John, John, I, 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 I see you're laughing and I know that you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, like that's, yeah, and that's, that's really what this is, right? This is like taking traffic from, and rather than doing the, there's probably some relevance here to, the, to Gamma as well, because like rather than doing and describing the traffic within the cluster via like this, it sort of goes up to, and then back down again, right? Like that's fair pity. Um, yes. It's a slightly different way to achieve a similar thing. And that is very important in the Canadian right. right. There's an so, interesting interaction too with um, network policy as well. Like yeah. you could I mean, protect <laughs> a resource from being directly accessed for security reasons. Uh, but yeah. People may also use it to bypass network policy restrictions, so it's a bit funny. Yeah, yeah. So you get the uh, the same joy that we had with uh, ingress control as an external name uh, all over again if you're not careful, um, which was not cool. Um, so yeah, there's definitely things to talk about here. <laughs> yeah, I think we've we've run out of time for our meeting. Thank you for everyone uh, for staying around, but. Uh, I think we've got plenty more to discuss on this one. I can add it to the agenda for next week. Uh, but in the meantime, feel free to add comments. Uh, and I, I've run out of time for everything else, but just something to think about longer term. Some of these things feel like they could be better represented as issues. Uh, this is more of an organizational thing, but just throwing that out there, uh, maybe we are using discussions a bit too much. Uh, but we're past time. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so I, I think you can convert them. There's a conversion yeah. to and from. Yes. Cool.
So I think that that awesome. may be the, I think that may be the answer. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Cool. Thanks, awesome. everyone. Yeah, I think the, the key part a... here is that we all gotta we all gotta make sure that we review the discussions as well as the issues. Yes. Yes. Thanks, everyone.